Good afternoon, ladies and gents. Welcome back to Higher Chemistry. Been a bit of a break in real life, but uh, in YouTube land, it's probably just taking you to click the last video to get here. I would like to have a look at organic chemistry now, as opposed to physical chemistry and bonding, which is what we were looking at before. And I would like to look today at the topic of esters. Uh, there is a connection between these two apparently random objects and this, and we'll come back to that in the very near future. But first of all, and now uh, that's good, I just strawberry stained my paper. Well done, hey. Um, first of all, what is an ester? The answer is an ester is just a homologous series, in the same way as the alcohols and the carboxylic acids are. Um, I haven't. A, done a video so far on the alcohols and carboxylic acids. I may do so, in fact, in the very near future. Just as background to this, I'm being selfish because my class have already done it, alcohols and carboxylic acids, um, but I will try and do it for YouTube land viewers in the very near future. In the meantime, how do you make an ester? The answer to that is relatively straightforward. What you require is you require uh, a pen that works, you require Excuse me, two seconds. Where was I? Yes, you require a pen that works. I've got one. Before I go any further, by the way, the content covered in the SQA uh, spe course specification documents are pages 65, 66, 67, and a tiny little bit. Sorry, 65, 66, and a tiny little bit, 67 at the top. And if you've got access to the Scholar documents, it is page... Page 89 onwards. As I was about to say, to make an ester, you require to join two different homologous series together. This is why this is a slightly different one to what we've ever seen before. You need an alcohol, a member of the alcohol family, and you need to join that to a member of the carboxylic acid family. When you join them together, boom, you make an ester. Let's take a look at how that actually happens on a molecular scale. Let's pick a nice simple alcohol. Let's go with uh, ethanol. Uh, you notice I'm not putting these H's in because A, I'm feeling lazy, and B, they're not really needed, and they will just complicate things. We'll come back to that later on. And a carboxylic acid. Again, let's go nice and simple. Let's go with ethanoic acid. Now, we normally would tend to write ethanoic acid this way around but there is no legal necessity to do so. It's just force of habit, but you'll see why I've flipped it over in the very, very near future. Right, we're going to join these together. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to pluck out some atoms here. Uh, and we are going to pluck out these two and that one. And they will run off hand in hand to the sunset together. Uh, forming a happy fairy story and also forming a molecule of water in the process. So what we're going to make, we're going to make, well, plus H2O. What on earth is left behind? Well, don't forget that there's a bond between the O and the H and there's a bond between the C and the O. So we've broken this bond halfway through and broken this bond halfway through. So what we can do is just patch these two half-broken bonds together. Uh, and if we follow the colour code, you'll see you get that oxygen staying intact, um, and then this carbon. Uh, and I've changed the angle in the bonds here, but there's nothing to stop you uh, keeping it at the original angles. And that is a rester. Simple as that. If it's a homologous series, it must have, or all the members of this family must have a few things in common. Haven't made a, I have not made a mistake with this, by the way, with this arrow. Uh, we'll come back to that in the very near future. Uh, as I was saying, if it is a member of a homologous series, they need to have a functional group, a way you can recognise them simply by looking at them. And the functional group of esters is this chunk in the centre here, known as the ester link. That's the functional group. Um, and that's, that's how you make them. It's very simple. Excuse me, two seconds. Sorry, I was in medical need of finishing my coffee there. I apologise. Um, what does the SQA want you to know? Other than this is how you form esters. 
They also want you to know what they are used for and let me bring my strawberry and my nail varnish back again. Um, they require you to know that esters are fruity smelling uh, molecules and that's actually what makes fruit so incredibly attractive and addictive for human beings. Evolution has given us uh, esters in fruit and we love the smell of esters. Uh, which is a nice side effect because it makes the us eat the fruit, which is good for our health and also good for distributing plant seeds. There you go. You're just walking seed dispensers for plants' point of view. This apparently oddball connection here is because the nail varnish is basically coloured plastic dissolved in a solvent. And that's the other thing that SQ wants you to know that esters are good for. Not only are they good for smelling nice, but they're really good for dissolving things. Um... And basically, this is an ester. In fact, if I remember correctly, it might actually even be this ester that's in here. Uh, when you paint it on your nails, um, then the ester evaporates and leaves the plastic behind. The same chemical, exactly the same chemical, the ester is in nail varnish remover. You might find you know, your nail varnish remover is advertised as being acetone-free. Um, acetone is the old name for propanone. Um, which is another homologous series that I haven't talked about because it's connected with the alcohols. See my other video if you're interested for that. So there you go. There's your two uses for esters summed up in a, in a, a thumbnail, probably actually. Um, smells nice uh, and is very good at dissolving things. Um, esters, by the way, if you have a look for a second here, the alcohol and the carboxylic acid did indeed have uh, hydrogen bonding because the O is joined to the H in both of these molecules which gives these relatively high boiling points these guys here on the other hand you notice yes it's got H's and it's got O's but they're not joined so therefore these have no hydrogen bonds they're actually relatively non-polar and they're quite good at that's why they dissolve plastic so well let's have a look at how you name esters uh, and I'm so far out of the way of doing this I've just realised that I've only got myself one sheet of paper excuse me so if we want to name esters, uh, the name of the ester has got two parts. The first part comes from the alcohol you used to form the ester. And the second part, if I keep this colour code from the previous slide, the second part comes from the carboxylic acid. So the alcohol we used last time was ethanol. Uh, and what we do is we chop off the anol bit because it's no longer an alcohol uh, and we replace it with ile. So we replace the anol with yl. So that becomes ethyl or ethyl, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Uh, and we had ethanoic acid. Get it right here. Ethanoic acid. Um, but it's no longer anoic acid because it doesn't have double bond o OH anymore. So what we do is we chop off the oic acid part and replace it with O8. So this becomes ethyl ethan O8. And that's the name of our ester. Ethyl ethanoate. I'm going to pause and pre-draw a couple of other esters so you don't have to get bored watching me do it. Okay, uh, here's a couple of esters. Let's try and work out what they were assembled from, which alcohol and which carboxylic acid we used to build these esters. And once we know that, we can create their names. So if we have a look at this one here, you can see three carbons in a row. The oxygen is there, C double bond O, that's our ester link. And if we work effectively backwards on this one, this would be an alcohol and this would be our carboxylic acid. I decided to give this the use of this one because it's a slightly odd usage case here. It looks like there's something missing, but there isn't. You'll see in a second. Uh, so that is the alcohol. So one, two, three, uh, prop, and then we end in ail, propyl. This was the carboxylic acid, one carbon only. So propyl methano eight. So this was made from propanol and methanoic acid. A frequent thing the SQA uh, will like you to do is they'll give you the ester and they'll ask you to work backwards. Um, so in order to work backwards to create the alcohol, what we do is literally just, where I've drawn the line there, just chop the molecules apart and then rebuild the original molecules that you would have had, which would be that and 
and then we need to replace the HO on there, the hydroxyl group. Uh, so we rebuild the hydroxyl group on there, rebuild the hydroxyl, put it alongside the carbonyl, and you create your carboxyl functional group. Please don't forget uh, the names of these guys. You need to know the fact that that is called a hydroxyl group, and this is called a carboxyl group. And this by itself, as we would have seen if you watched my other videos on alcohols, that's called a carbonyl group. So that was propyl methanoate here. If we do the same trick here, uh, you notice I have been nasty and I've flipped it around the other way. Um, so we still break at that point there between the lone oxygen and the carbon with the double bond O. Uh, this time, this is the alcohol here. These are the sort of tricks the SQA will pull on you. Everybody's used to seeing them written that way around. There's nothing at all to stop you flipping it over. Um, so this is our alcohol. So if we rebuild that, we end up with methanol. The one carbon, so this is going to be methyl. Uh, and this, of course, was our carboxylic acid. One, two, three. So it would have looked like um, this. Uh, methyl propanoate. 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 If I can spell, that would help. So that's the name of our ester here. Methyl propanoate. Made from methanol and propanoic acid. They're effectively the opposite sort of thing of this ester here. Um, are we nearly done? Very, very nearly done. I'll just get a fresh sheet of paper. Just a couple of minor things left, folks, and then we're done for today. Um, it's all very well showing the full structural versions, and then it becomes dead easy to work out, if we have a look at this for a second, these are the full structural formulas, and you can see crystal clear where to split the molecule. What happens if, as they frequently do, they give you the shortened structural formula instead, and no more colour clues this time? So I'm going to pause the video, I'm going to draw the shortened structural formulas of a couple of esters and we're going to show you how to identify which half of the ester was the alcohol and which half was the acid. Okay, um, now shortened structural formula time. Gets a bit tougher to identify what's what. Um, you notice I've put two different versions here. I've condensed six CH2s together. I've seen them do that. And you'll also notice here I've got COO written out and I've condensed it down to CO2. This, not so common nowadays. Um, this is the more common uh, representation, but just in case you ever find that CO2, is that carbon dioxide? No, it's not carbon dioxide, it's just COO. In other words, that is your ester link there, and that is your ester link there. Q and OOK, it just depends which way around um, they've shown you. Is there a way you can spot the acid half and the alcohol half? If you want to try this yourself, feel free to pause the video. Fire away and see if you can work out which 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 half of this and this ester came from uh, the alcohol and which half came from the acid. Simple answer to that hypothetical question I just posed is this. Just take the strawberry out of the way. There we go. See this carbon here. This carbon here, this bald carbon, it doesn't have any hydrogens on it. That is your carbon which is double bonded to the oxygen. So whatever you see a bald carbon there, then that's effectively carbon double bond O. That is your acid. So if we were to split this molecule, we would be splitting it there. And this will be your alcohol half. And this containing the bald carbon will be your acid half. And on this side of the page, same logic applies. There's your bald carbon. Um, so we'll split the molecule there. And this is your acid half, and this is your alcohol half. So if we go ahead, and again, if you want to pause the video and name these yourself, just as some practice. This one here has one, two, two carbons. So that's going to be ethanol, which becomes ethyl. And on this side, one, two, three, it's so easy to miss that one. Please don't miss that carbon, of course. Ethyl propanoate from propanoic acid. And over here, we always put the alcohol first, regardless of which way around the molecule is written. So we need the alcohol first. Oh, look, just one carbon. So that's going to be methyl. That's made from methanol. And this time around, I thought I'd show you the compressed six CH2s together. It's super tricky, that, and don't fall for that. It's one and six makes seven, and one more makes eight. So that was actually octanoic acid, 
which incidentally, I don't know if you know this or not, is as big a molecule as they require you. They only require you to know the names of up to eight. Octanoic acid becomes octanoate. Uh, one more curveball I've seen being thrown in a problem-solving context from time to time is the fact that you could actually have a molecule that looks like this. We actually used to teach these. It used to be part of the higher chemistry course in terms of making polyesters, which of course is what your fleece is made from. Uh, it's a polymer. It just happens to be made of esters. That's why it's called polyester. Now, if you look at this, there are a couple of things that can happen here. Uh, one of the things is, this is a sort of a dual personality molecule. It's got a carboxylic acid end, um, but it's also got an alcohol, the hydroxyl end. And I've seen them ask questions where this molecule curves round and actually joins up with itself, which would give you something along the lines. Again, one more time, if you want to pause the video and have a go at what that would actually look like, um, it would give you something along the lines of what we got one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to be pentagonal, isn't it? One, two, three. This is where I get this wrong, of course. You get to laugh at me. Carbon. Um, yes, I've got it wrong as well. <laughs> you do get to laugh. One, two, three, four. I'm a Muppet, I do apologise, and I don't want to start this video again. So therefore, let's not try and be fancy here. That's what I get for thinking ahead of myself. So, uh, that carbon there is going to have a double bond. One, two, three, four, five, perfect. And then the oxygen is going to be there. And, let me just check I've done that right. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, I have. Yep, I'm doubting my own self there. So, uh, the molecule is actually curved around. Uh, and it's given you this ester, which is a cyclic ester. Um, and of course, don't forget, you make water. I think that is it. There's one more thing right back at the start of the video that I'd like to go back to, which is a apparent mistake. This thing here is the old fool losing his marbles. He's only drawn half an arrow intentionally. Yes, he has only drawn half an arrow intentionally because this whole reaction is an equilibrium, as you'd probably guessed. So that means that you're actually making the ester, and also the ester is falling apart to recreate your carboxylic acid. Now, we do a lot of work on equilibrium. Um, the way I, I've taught it to my class, we're actually finished equilibrium, but uh, this is a nice callback to it. I might do a video on all the stuff that we have covered in class, but I haven't covered on my YouTube channel yet, which is equilibria, Hess's Law, calculations, mole calculations. If you want a video on mole calculations, you might want to drop me a... Drop me a Thumbs up on that. Um, but that's done for today. Uh, next lesson is going to be, uh, apparently, just two seconds, I'll show you exactly what next lesson is going to be, which seems utterly unconnected with esters. Uh, next time, we're going to have a look at fats and oils, uh, and what on earth that's got to do with esters. They're surprisingly closely related. Until then, thanks for listening. Bye, folks.